G'day, g'day, and welcome to another episode of Kiwi Car Life. And now that I've had my Lexus ISF for a good three months or so, it's given me an opportunity to learn what living with a car like this is like. And so today, we're going to be discussing the five things that I love about this car and the five things I don't love about this car. The first thing that I love about this car is the V8 engine. It makes a truly fantastic noise. The induction is so loud. The second thing that I absolutely love about this car is all of the features that it has. My old Accord that I had, I claimed had all the features I could ever need, but truth be told, it was missing a few things that do make living with a car just that much nicer. This one, on the other hand, has cruise control, same as my Accord, but also has auto lights and wipers. It's got keyless entry and push button starts. It's got electric seats, which I genuinely didn't really think I'd use, but it's quite nice after other people drive it to just be able to get back in and push the memory seat button. And it has a fantastic sounding Mark Levinson stereo system. Because I really like my music, having a excellent sounding stereo is really, really nice to have. The third thing that I love about this car is the comfort. Now, I'm gonna kind of contradict myself here because I'm gonna say that, look, it's not the best riding car that I've ever owned. But there is a fundamental difference, and that is that because my core was a bit lighter, I feel like it would get a little more upset by particular bumps. This car definitely rides firmer where you really feel all the bumps in the road. However, it just never seems to get upset. It just kind of goes and just flattens them, maybe just because it's a little bit heavier. For the most part, I'm really happy with it. The fourth thing that I love about this car is the handling. The way that it goes through turns, and I discovered this on the track, even in the wet, is just so progressive and easy to control. So I can just be an absolute eight behind the wheel, and it just, I don't, like I'm, I'm not scared, I just feel like I can do that and I'm not gonna get myself in any trouble. I'm definitely not gonna say it's the best handling car I've ever driven, but I guess what I love about it is just how controllable it is. And you can just have so much fun. The fifth thing that I love about this car is the reliability. With it being a Lexus and being a fairly simple five liter V8 engine, there's not really a whole lot that goes wrong with these. The only one that I've heard of is the valley plate leaking, but thankfully with mine, it doesn't seem to have any problems with that. But otherwise, you basically just service them and they just seem to keep on running. In fact, there's one in the US I've seen that's done nearly 500,000 miles and it's still going strong. The first thing that isn't so great on this car ooh, is the rear seat leg room. I am six feet tall and frankly, there's about as much room back here as a thimble. I will admit, it's extremely comfortable. The seats themselves, with the sort of bucket nature to them, they do hold you in very well around corners. And with the center armrest down here, it does make for a comfortable experience, at least for my top half. However, my feet are squashed underneath the seat. My knees are going right into the back of the hard plastic on the seat in front. And while I could perhaps move this a little bit further forward, it's far from the most spacious back seating compartment I've ever sat in. The second thing that I don't so much love about this car is the fuel consumption. While it makes a fantastic noise, when you do put your foot down, you're aware that you are churning through the fuel at an almighty rate. And on the open road, I've been able to get it to about 10 liters per 100k, which I think is pretty darn good for a five liter V8. But driving it to and from work and traffic and so on like this, it's doing 14, 15 litres per 100 k. And on track, I think it was showing 34 litres per 100 k or something like that, which is just diabolical. It's far from the most fuel efficient car that I have ever owned. The third thing that's a bit annoying about this car is that it won't stop talking to you in Japanese and the whole stereo system in here is literally completely useless. I think I'm in the middle of the ocean, everything is just in stick language and I just can't understand any of it. And so, frankly, what does that mean? The fourth thing that's quite annoying about this car is that you can't open the boot without the key. The car is unlocked. The key is literally sitting right there in the center console and yet it won't let me open the boot, which is just stupid. Why can't you just let me open it? The car is unlocked. And the final thing that's a little bit annoying about this car 
is the transmission. It's one of the big complaints with these, and if I give you a little demonstration here, it might help to sort of understand why people find the gearbox a little bit frustrating. I'm sitting in eighth gear, I'm going 80 k's an hour. If I just mash it, let's see how long it takes before I'm going full bore. So, okay, that was pretty much, yeah, right on two seconds. Now, however, let's put it in manual mode and see how long it takes. Six seconds before we're in the power band. When you're flat chat, right, if I'm in third, pretending I'm on a track day here, it upshifts smoothly and quickly and down gears. Likewise, rev matches really, really well. And when you're just cruising around like this, the transmission is very smooth. You put it in D, it's perfectly fine. So it's kind of like really good at 10% throttle in D and really good at 100% throttle in M, but then it's kind of that in between where yeah, some of the downshifts are a little bit average, some of the upshifts aren't the best, you know, if you want to go down here, it doesn't really rev match so well and so on. So you kind of need to be either absolutely flat chat or just in D. You don't really have any in between, which is a little bit frustrating for somebody like me who quite likes to sort of use the paddles and go up and down gears even when you're just sitting in traffic. So there we go, that's five things I love and five things I don't so much love about my 2008 Lexus ISF. If you have a similar car, let me know down in the comments if there's anything else you can think of. And if you want to see more videos that I've made with my Lexus ISF, then click on the links popping up right about now, and I'll look forward to seeing you again next time.